Hello and welcome to my video blog for Saturday, September 11th. Today is the nine year anniversary of terrorist attacks which struck New York, Washington DC and Pennsylvania, but affected our entire nation. Nine years later, we are still resilient and standing strong. This somber anniversary has prompted some people within our nation to want to do some crazy things. Like that pastor in Florida who wanted to burn the Quran. In my opinion, the man is trying to get attention, attention by pandering to the press on whether he should or whether he shouldn't to, I need to meet with the people up in New York. Huh? <laughs> Not exactly the way to win friends and influence people if you're talking about wanting to burn Muslims' most sacred book. Look, the nation's literacy rate is low with unemployment figures in the double digits as the president is encouraging people to go back to school and get an education. So if this pastor is trying to get attention, don't burn books. Instead, encourage people to read them. Start a book club. I mean, Oprah did, and look what it did to her career. I mean, she is huge. She even has her own network. You should look into that. So today's lesson, don't burn books. Instead, read them. You know, I like to read when I travel. And most recently, I read the book Game Changer when I went to Jersey. But Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger likes to look out the window and tweet as he travels. As we recently found out this week, as the governor was on his way to China, and on his way to China, he happened to be flying on a route over Alaska. So while in flight over Alaska, he was looking out the window and tweeted, I can't see Russia from my window. Now, was this a diss? Was he making fun of Sarah Palin? Who knows? Because maybe he really was being very genuine. Maybe he was looking out his window and was like, I can't, I can't see a lot. Can you see Russia? I, you know, I can't see Russia. I don't know. Maybe it was a cloudy day. Maybe it wasn't a joke at all. But either way, Sarah Palin didn't take too kindly to it. In fact, she went after the governor, basically addressing everything about his performance as governor of the state of California and bringing up some very disparaging facts about the economic state of the state of California. So, Sarah Palin and 40 characters or less basically ran down the poor economic status of California. And you know, Sarah Palin, is that right? I mean, come on. What did California do to you? Why do you want to make Californians feel bad about their state? I mean, maybe all this proves that Sarah Palin can't take a joke. And, and if she can't take a joke, she's not alone because a lot of people don't like you making fun of them. But John Biner proved that he can take it all in stride. The Republican House Minority Leader was on GMA on Wednesday. And during his interview, it pretty much started out as business as usual. As George Stephanopoulos asked him about the president's pending speech that was due to happen in Ohio later on that day. And he also asked him about his take about the 9-11 Quran burning issue. Then George hit him with a hard left by asking him some beauty question. A beauty question on GMA? I mean, some producer probably thought it was a wonderful idea to have George present Biner with some polling results about the Republican leader's tan. That's right, his tan. According to the GMA poll, 30% thought that Biner worked on his tan too much, while 27% didn't like it. 
So that must have left about 43% of the viewing audience wondering, when did Good Morning America turn into the style networks, How Do I Look? I mean, obviously, I like to get a little sassy with issues, but even I would not have asked Biner that question. But Biner took it all in stride by thanking George for the interview and then counting down the seconds until the segment ended. Now, Biner's calmness under pressure is a reminder of how important it is to keep it classy because you never know who may be watching, especially since it's election season and everyone is out watching these election speeches that are happening. Like the one delivered by Phil Davison running for a Stark County Treasurer in Ohio. If you haven't seen the YouTube video of Davison's speech, it's quite a doozy. It's been played on all the major networks, including some other very notable syndicated shows. And in it, Davison informs the audience that he will not apologize for his tone as he's yelling at them. I mean, are you kidding me? Not apologizing for your tone? Can you imagine just sitting there and just chatting with your friends and drinking your tea and then all of a sudden the candidate at the podium starts yelling at you? Especially when he delivers the line, desperate calls, desperate times calls for, that's right, that's right, desperate measures. I mean, what are you to think? I mean, the whole thing was quite jarring. Now, the last candidate who desperately tried to grab the attention of the audience was Howard Dean. And we all know how that wound up for him. And unfortunately, it got him to the same place as Davison because they both wound up watching the rest of the election play out from the sidelines. Better luck next time. I'll see you.